Ina died somehow, quietly, quickly, and unexpectedly. Here she was just sitting at the table eating soup, when suddenly she just fell face down into the plate, dropped her spoon, and that was it. As if someone had turned a switch or pressed a button under the seat on the chair, which eased the strings and the figure on the surface fell like a relaxed gymnast. But there was no button under Ina's chair, and she would not recover when the unknown doll maker released the button, the strings were stretched and she would rise like a toy. Andrew was sitting in a high chair. He was eating, not soup, but baby cottage cheese. He was only 10 months old. He couldn't walk yet. The child did not understand what was going on with his mother. At first, he thought maybe she was playing with him. He called her, but she did not respond. Andrew was a very quick-witted and wiggly child, unable to walk on his feet. He was good at climbing and crawling, and was already standing perfectly well, but he could not keep his balance yet. Andrew got off his high chair, flopped down on his butt, grabbed his mother's hem, and pulled. She did not respond, and then he cried. Andrew's grandmother, Ina's mother, came running from the room. Ina! The grandmother spluttered, grabbed the baby in her arms, and carried him into the room and put him in the crib. Her hands were shaking, tears were streaming in her eyes, and she knew something was wrong with her daughter. The woman returned to the kitchen and shook her daughter. Ina did not react. The grandmother called an ambulance. The doctors arrived fairly quickly. During the time they drove, Ina did not move. The doctor examined her and shook his head. The ambulance left and a hearse was called. For several hours, grandmother sat in her room with Andrew in her arms and couldn't bring herself to go to the kitchen and get Ina cleaned up, get the soup out of her hair, wash her off. She couldn't believe that her daughter had just died like that for no reason at all. Probably an aortic aneurysm, the ER doctor said. He found no signs of life. A hearse would take Ina to the morgue, and the coroner would issue a death certificate. Grandmother tried not to look when they took Ina away, and kept holding her orphaned grandson close to her. Grandmother could not even cry from the shock she was in. The sound of a key in the door was heard. Ina! Andrew! Daddy's home! She heard the voice of her son-in-law, Ina's husband. Oh my god, the woman forgot about Alexei because of grief and shock, and did not even call him to inform him of the disaster. Where's Ina? Alexei walked into the room with a shocked look and stared at his mother-in-law. He saw that she had crying eyes. Andrew was crying. What's wrong? Alexei looked around as if he hoped she was about to jump out from behind the curtains or out of the closet and say, surprise. Alexei, just sit down. Ina is dead, said the grandmother, and burst into tears, and it was as if she burst. All that she had been holding inside for these few hours came out. Alexei was in shock. He could not believe that this was not a joke. He held the papers from the doctors in his trembling hands and mumbled something, and then the paperwork was done at the Bureau of Funeral Services. Alexei handled all the paperwork. He decided to cremate Ina. Well, how's that? Ina's mother couldn't believe it. It was somehow unchristian. And what, there won't even be a grave where I could come, cry, bring Andrew and tell him about his mother so that he would remember her? The elderly woman burst into tears. That's what I decided. We'll bury the urn in the wall. That's how it will be. Just let's agree right away. Andrew should not be taken anywhere. There is nothing for a child to do in a graveyard. The ex-son-in-law, I guess, sternly declared now that Ina was gone. The grandmother did not understand who she was to the widower of her daughter. The main thing is that she is still Andrew's grandmother, and who has the rights? I hope Alexei did not decide that his son did not need his grandmother anymore. The elderly woman covered her mouth with her hand and decided that she'd probably better keep quiet now. Well, cremated, okay. There will be a plate on the wall, that's where she will come. It is probably better not to argue with Alexei. Maybe the events of the past three days have made him some kind of tough, strong-willed, and stern, or maybe he was just hiding behind this mask of his grief. After all, the man was suddenly widowed. So many things had fallen upon him. Then came that dreadful day. Everyone who wanted to attend the funeral gathered at the crematorium. When it was their turn, everyone went inside. Andrew was in his grandmother's arms. 
He did not understand anything, all the time fidgeting and twitching, sniffing unhappily, she could not calm him down in any way. Grandmother already began to think that Alexei was right when he did not want to take Andrew to this event. Ina's friend insisted. She, unlike her grandmother, could argue with her friend's husband. Nothing in her life depended on it. Ina's friend said, Leosha, you can think whatever you want about me, that's your right, but we'll take Andrew with us. How will you look the boy in the eyes when he grows up? Why wasn't he at his mother's funeral? Look at all the advisors, Alexei muttered, but did not argue. He was very tired for the past few days. Andrew grunted and stretched his arms toward his mother, who was lying in the coffin. It seemed that he could not understand why his mother was lying there and would not get up to him. And then the goodbye part was over. They began to cover the coffin. The baby became excited, and finally he managed to jump out of his grandmother's arms. Everyone thought that the child would rush to the coffin, but he ran to the oven damper and covered it with himself, spreading his arms out to the sides. The crematorium workers were stunned by what they saw, and everyone in mourning was as shocked as they were. Until this time, Andrew could not walk. These were his first steps, which by coincidence he took in the crematorium, and the boy cried and would not let his mother's coffin be sent into the furnace. I've heard such cases happen. The kid must be feeling something, said one old crematorium worker. Lock up the coffin. What can he feel? Alexei commanded the workers. Wait, you'll be in charge at your place, said the old worker. Mikhail, open the lid. The second worker, not understanding anything, threw back the lid of the coffin, and the old one checked Ina's pulse. Are you crazy? The girl's alive, shouted the old man. Everyone rushed to Ina, but the husband was not so happy about the news. He rushed off in a completely different direction. Mikhail, get that asshole, shouted the old worker. Mikhail rushed after Alexei. He grabbed a shovel on the way, threw it like a spear, and knocked Alexei to the ground. They urgently called an ambulance, and it was true. Ina turned out to be alive, just drugged with sleeping pills. She was taken to the hospital, and Alexei was detained. As it turned out later, Alexei put a horse dose of sleeping pills. He thought that in one fell swoop he would get rid of his wife and mother-in-law. Coming home from work that day, he expected to see a very different scene, and was unspeakably shocked to find that his mother-in-law was alive, and therefore he didn't even have to play. The only thing the bastard didn't think about was, what if Ina decided to feed that soup to Andrew too, or maybe he decided to get rid of the baby too? The investigator persistently asked. Alexei confessed that he didn't mean any harm to the child. The whole point was that Alexei had a mistress, a rich lady. There was one problem, she could not have children. The lady had too much of a wild youth, she aborted too often. So Alexei came up with the idea to get rid of his wife and mother-in-law in one fell swoop while the child was young so that he would not remember his own mother and considered his father's mistress as his mother. But something went wrong, and the grandmother did not eat the soup. She decided to eat later when Ina put Andrew to bed. Sometimes such spontaneous decisions can save a life. It was the young, healthy Ina who was able to overcome the sleeping pills and began to come to her senses. Andrew was the only one who felt that his mother was alive, but the old woman might not have survived such a trip to the land of Morpheus. The investigator still long questioned Alexei, but whether he really came up with all of this plan, maybe his mistress encouraged him. But Alexei accepted all the responsibility, and that rich lady never even once came to him, neither in the detention center nor later in the jail, never sent a parcel or wrote a single line, and he almost killed his wife because of her. But thank God, Ina survived and recovered. By the way, she later married that same Mikhail, he asked her on a date when Ina came back to thank the workers for not obeying Alexei. If you liked this story, like it, share it with your friends and family, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next story.